him in your house, neither bid him God's speed. Because if you bid him God's speed, John said you are a partaker of his evil deeds. Anybody who would say that Jesus is not the Son of God is an antichrist. They are against my Lord and Savior. They are speaking against the very one who's responsible for me being on my way to heaven. I ain't got nothing to do with him when he speaks against my Lord, the one who went to Calvary for me, the one who suffered and died a horrible death just so that I could live. I ain't got nothing to do with him when he disrespects Jesus. He disrespects my Savior. He disrespects the one who laid down his life for me. He's disrespecting my shepherd, the one who leads me beside the sea waters. And when he disrespects my shepherd, I ain't got nothing to do with him. He's disrespecting my Lord, the one who's the head of my life. and the one who takes care of me when I can't take care of myself. And if he disrespects him, I ain't got nothing to do with him. When he disrespects my Lord, he disrespects the one who's responsible for covering me with the blood. I mean, he took the cross of Calvary on his own back and was laid up at Arthur's heel. When the cross got too heavy and he buckled up under the pressure, he took a man named Simon and put that cross on Simon's back. And Simon walked the rest of the way with Jesus. To talk about Jesus is to talk about somebody who had denied themselves. Yes, for I could live and I could have life in him. To talk about Jesus is to talk about my good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. To talk about Jesus is to talk about the one who said I am the resurrection and the life. You talking about the man who's going to come back one day and if I'm lying cold in the grave, he's going to call my name. I'm going to rise up to meet him in the air. Don't talk about my Lord because you're talking about my source of life. And so anybody who will not confess him as the Son of God, the Bible says he is a deceiver and he is an antichrist. Don't have nothing to do with him. Don't invite them into your house. Don't buy their books. Don't listen to their tape. Keep telling them to keep it moving because Jesus is ahead of my life. And if you ain't got sense enough to recognize that, then just keep on going. Keep on. Yes, sir. Anybody who won't confess him, we ought not to have anything to do with it. And so John tells us that if we do couple ourselves with them, well. we are a partaker of their evil deeds. When I confess Christ as the Son of God and as the head of my life, I don't do that in mouth only. Can I talk to you? When I confess him as the Son of God, a confession defined is also an acknowledgement or a profession of the truth. I like that word profession because it indicates what kind of life I'm living. It indicates what I do on a daily basis. It's dictated and determined by what I believe. My belief is why I am what I am. And if you like what I have become, don't pat me on the back, baby. Tell Jesus thank you. Because he's the one that brought me <laughs> to the mighty own way. It's all about him. Ain't any anything that I did so perfectly. It's because of him. He has the power to make Fall straighten up when they are messed up. I mean, you can't get no messed up than a man who running around the graveyard butt naked with a rock in his head and cut himself. You know what I'm saying? Out of his mind had so many devils in there that when Jesus said, what's your name? Yes, sir. The devils answered back, Legion. It's a whole bunch of us in here. <laughs> Some folk would come up home. Mm -hmm. One day, hey, good morning, how you doing? 
The next day, they don't you say nothing to me. You follow me? One minute you can talk to them. Next minute you came, you can't hardly walk by. <laughs> what is going on? Legion. <laughs> it's a it's a whole bunch of devils up in there. And all these different problems that they had. They just let him have his way. They need to come to Jesus. A legion ain't no problem for Jesus. A Roman legion contained a number of 12,000. Yes, sir. I don't know whether or not it was actually 12,000 devils in this man. I do know that there was approximately 200 pigs yes. along the mountainside. Yes. And the devils begged Jesus. Yes. See how much respect the devil got for Jesus? Can I just talk to you? The devils begged Jesus. Don't set us into the abyss. Let us go into the hogs. And the Bible says that Jesus gave them leave to go into the halls. Yes. The halls couldn't stand. But he is a man running around with all them devils in him. Now you know why he was butt naked cutting himself. But the halls couldn't stand the fact that the devils were in them. The Bible said they ran over the cliff and tried into the wall. About two in the water, choked themselves to death because of the devils that inhabited that man. You know, see what I'm saying? Right? The demon possession wasn't nothing to play with. When the devil would come and invade that house, he would take over. Now, see, the benefit that we have today is that the time has passed. Well, the devil can just enter into me and make me do what I don't want to do. That time has passed. Reason why we know that time has passed is because if the devil could have that much power over you, he would. He would. And he would make you do stuff that you never thought you would do. And so sometimes we say, but that's what he's doing now. I think we make statements all the time. The devil got in me. <laughs> if the devil ever really got in you, you would be able to stand. No, sir. That is an evil being. He self He causes you to want to destroy yourself. You follow me? Every demon possession we looked at in the Bible. The folk were trying to destroy themselves. When that man in Matthew 17 came to Jesus about his son, he said the devil inside that boy was throwing him into the fire. And he was throwing him into the water trying to drown. That's what he said. I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't help him. If you can do anything, help my boy. Every time the devil got into somebody, he was trying to take their life. Yeah. He wasn't just making folk cuss nobody out. He wasn't just making you wake up with a bad attitude. That's right. He was trying to kill you. Right, sir. The devil ever really got in you. You couldn't stand it. Because you'd be on your way out of here. So let me explain to you what's happening today. We allow the devil to tempt us to be the way we are. We allow him to cause us to turn a deaf ear. To what God has to say. We allow him to trick us into thinking that we right. Yes. And that everybody else is wrong. <laughs> That's how he worked today. He is so slick with his deception. That he will make you think you are right with God. And on your way to heaven. When we, in reality if you look in that book you know you're on your way to heaven. But you just think as long as I comprehend in the bill, God gonna somehow overlook what I'm doing. No ma'am and no sir. So he don't make you do anything. He doesn't have that kind of power. He got that kind of power. 